We're going to be talking about uh, Chile today. Uh, Chile is one of those ones that have been also under the surface for the past month and a half. There's been stuff going on in Chile since the middle of October. So we're going to back up a little bit. Uh, what happened ba back in the 18th of October, um, the government proposed a 4% increase in um, the um, like SEPTA passes or their train, the train fares went up by 4%. So you have a bunch of middle schoolers jumping through the turnstiles with their backpacks on, trying to go there, and then people in, in SWAT gear chasing them out, right? That, that image hit Chilean society, and you have this outpouring of support. But the government's reaction uh, to, to this, this was extreme. It's thought that he calculated that when he did this, declared a state of emergency in Santiago, that he was going to make those students look ridiculous and that the older people of Chile, the more order oriented older people would sort of uh, be on his side and say, yes, these young student hoodlums have to uh, get out of the street, you know, and bring order back to these cities. And it didn't break that way at all. In fact, it broke the other way that what this did was this sort of cracked the egg open on a lot of other discontents that had been brewing in the country for a long time. And the general population of Chile broke on the side of these students and, and young people and that went against him. And so this, this idea of cracking down, and this is not new because he has been using the military to crack down on things, even going back as far as April, there was another student uprising and a raise in tuition fees and he brought out the police and, and went the vans and shot tear gas and scared everybody off with the hose cannons, the water cannons, and it seemed to work. So he did it again in October, when these, when these kids started jumping the turnstiles and people started to protest this rise in the, in the subway fares, but it broke the other way. Which means once this started happening and there was more violence in the streets and all this stuff, he tried, he, tr he stuck the way the state of emergency, he rescinded the, 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 the fare increase, and he's reshuffled his, his cabinet. All trying to keep people quiet. But it's, it's like the more he tries to placate people by doing this, the more upset they're getting with him. And now it's getting to the stage where people are asking for him to step down, for his government to, to go in. It wasn't that way before, but the reaction to the people to the protest was so heavy-handed now that people don't see a way for him to stay as president. And that's where the sort of stalemate that we, we are at. But, but he's trying to, to do these things, but it's, it's not enough. There's something going on in Chilean society that is causing this. And you can see the cascade, right? The more empowered people get on the street, the more they ask for, and the more the government concedes, but also the more violent they become. So it has this sort of coalescing effect. And you have all these young people coming together and they're, they're feeling a sense of esprit de corps, right? Like they're coming together and this is a, it's a movement. But underneath it, that income inequality that is, that is creating this chasm between establishment government, the very rich, the 1%, and then the rest. The middle class is shrinking, if not disappearing, and people in Chile are really upset about that because these reforms go back quite actually deeper than just this. They go back to the 70s and 80s. So you have a highly educated population, as Chile is, and you also have educated people who are then taking to the streets and that's and that and that's the situation you have it's not a poverty wracked country where people are on their last legs and they they're so desperate that they have nothing else to do this is really a, a protest of people that really know what what they're protesting against i don't know where this is going to go frankly um it's probably going to get worse before it gets better piñera doesn't want to move the army seems to be totally on his side but if the army breaks with him and they side with the people, then there could be a military coup, which is probably the only way out of this unless some foreign actor comes in and sits these two groups down at the table. But I don't even know who would sit down with Piñera at this point.